It should be no surprise that professional athletes enjoy watching survival programs. They're, they're tough already. This is my world out here. This is the world of wilderness survival. So now, they've got their opportunity to come out here and survive with me. And his opponent, Elias Theodoro! Your ring tough, this is bush tough. It's a whole other world, man. Ah. But then they get their chance the next day. And I'll go on the field, and in the ice rink, and in the ring, and I see if I can survive their world. This is fighting to survive. Elias Didar, mixed martial artist. Official weight, 184.5 with a Spartan! As a fighter, I think I definitely have not only the discipline, but also somewhat the mental fortitude. This might not necessarily be the 15 minutes of pressure that I get in a cage, but rather you know, the 24 hours of pressure and the many different elements, if you will, that I'll be dealing with. My friends and I used to watch them all throughout high school. When I told them what I was doing, they were, they were uber jealous. So I'm really excited to get the full uh, Survive Man experience and more importantly, survive on my own. You've got to look at it like, you remember the first time you went into the ring? Yeah. You prepare, you train, and even if you've got control of your adrenaline rush, the opponent throws something at you that you weren't expecting. When those moments start hitting in the beginning of survival, it's like the first time in the ring. You think you're all set, and then Mother Nature throws something at you, so. I'm going to help Mother Nature a little bit here and throw some things your way that you're not expecting, Fair just enough. to keep you off kilter a bit. Okay. That's survival. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah, okay, let's go. You're about to get punched in the face. I'm fascinated by the fighter's mind. Throughout many, many years of teaching survival, and how well would someone who is so disciplined, so trained in very emotionally grueling, intellectually grueling, and certainly physically grueling challenges, fights, if you will, how would they do faced with the challenges that exist in nature, in the wilderness. All right, here's what I've done. This is just for you, Elias. First of all, I'm gonna walk through what we've got here, yeah. okay? A pot to boil water in. Amazing. A chainsaw for cutting wood. Bug pants. A flint striker. Duct tape. Fishing gear. Compass. One match with a box. A clear plastic bag. Some beef jerky. Emergency blanket. Folding knife. Belt knife. I'm going to allow you to pick three of these items. As I said, in survival, you really don't know what's coming at you till it's at you. A lot of times you don't have a lot of time to decide what you're going to do with the situation. So right now, you've got 30 seconds to pick three items. Shoot. Go now. Uh, One, two, shoot. three thoughts. Four thoughts. Um, I'm gonna grab the water. 10 seconds. Okay, uh, striking match and then a knife. Oh, God. Done? Yes, I think so. All right, you did that within 20 seconds. Okay, so you've got a pot to boil water in, a knife, and a flint striker. Have you used a flint striker before? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> These are your three items to take out into the bush. A couple things are gonna happen here. I'm not going to tell you right now why these are good, or why they're terrible choices. We're gonna find out out there. Fair enough. If you made a good decision or not. But for now, the thought here is, these are your three items, mm -hmm. and we're set to go out in the bush. You good to go? Yep. My expectations are that it's gonna be tough. Uh, obviously, being out in the elements, uh, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever happens throughout the day. But I'm sure the, the further out that we get, the more, you know, creepy crawly things that are gonna be popping out of nowhere. A big issue is gonna be, you know, keeping warm throughout the night. You know, whether it's making my own shelter or potentially even finding whatever food sources are around. 
You ever spent a night out in the forest without a tent? No, definitely not. How about alone? Have you ever spent a full day and night just completely alone? No. So this is it. This is the place. We're gonna hike in up here along this creek. One thing that's gonna be good about this is for navigation, I'd like to have us so that we never really lose sight of this creek. That way we'll always know where we point are. Point of reference. Yeah, so we've got a point of reference. We can use the creek and that's a great way to do it, whether it's a rock ledge or a, a road or a trail or something like that. Keep your senses going and like, okay, I know where I am, I know where I am, I know where I am. And that's what we want to have that today. First though, before we head into the woods, mm -hmm. I want to see what's in that backpack of yours. Let's do it. All right, let's see the cheats you brought into the game here. Contraband, if you will. Contraband, yeah. All right. So, face wash, I assume. Goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. Soap, goodbye. Toothpaste, goodbye. Um, bug repellent. No, oh, <laughs> no. That's a big cheat right there, man. Got some hair products. Got a lighter. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of the lighter. <laughs> hair okay. products. Yeah, again. yeah. Goodbye, get rid goodbye, of that. goodbye. Cure out. After bite gone. Unless you have personal medication, it's just Let's throw just the, get whole out the whole thing. There you go. All right. Throw the socks away. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an advantage. Okay, so hang tight, stay right there. Thank you. All right, <laughs> right. We're, we're far enough north that it's gonna cool down at night. Plus it may or may not rain, so I'm giving you a little bit extra punch. Appreciate there, it. All right, other than that, you're good to go, man. Now, now we start to survive. All right, now the shit gets real. This, again, is me being nice to you. All right, so giving you the jacket, that's gonna help out when it's cold. But what I want you to do before we go, because we're not taking any water with us, is hyperhydrate. Okay, so I'm gonna... It's actually funny, because we do the same process in fighting. It's called water loading. So okay. you drink a lot of water, and it, it basically builds up your bladder, and then you pee everything out. Yeah. So you're flushing everything out, yeah, and yeah. that includes your weight. Look at that, eh? he's a slave to his cell phone. It cracks me up, even here. Even though he's going in on a survival mission, he's been on that cell phone since we stopped. Sometimes when I see that, I feel old. All right, time to head into my world. Elias and I'll head in. Max is gonna follow along, getting shots as he can. And we've got company, we've got my dog Rogue with us. So this will be interesting to see how survival plays out uh, when you got a dog along. Is that a beaver dam? That is exactly what that is. That's a beaver dam up there. But it's also our bridge. Never walked across a beaver dam before? This is definitely a first. Yeah, I have fallen in, just so you know. It has, it has happened. Just when you get cocky, you think, ah, I got this, and it's ah! And uh, you find yourself six feet down in a beaver hole somewhere. You can see the creek. We really don't want to lose sight of the creek. That'll keep us going in the right direction. And I want to turn over where we go to you now. Oh, wow. So you're going to be leading the trail, right? right? You're going to start taking us deep into the forest. We're going to keep going until I've got something else for us. Don't get us lost. Yeah, right. A little bit of birch. Can go a long way later tonight. The 
this all seems dead. And now dead is more flammable stuff. So whether it was the birch that we had earlier, but try and set this on fire. If I can actually set some fire with my flint stick. Yeah, this is thick, thick stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's nice and open, but it's not getting us anywhere. No. You know, it's okay if we meander uh, a bit here. As long as, you keep as, long as we keep things in mind is where we got to get back to and, and we can get back to it easily. See, right now, the creek's over there. Mm -hmm. So if I look like this, the sun is hitting me here, mm -hmm. right? So, and if I turn straight, 45 degrees, I know that's the creek right there. So mm -hmm. that's, that's probably gonna serve us for a while. I mean, when I say for a while, I mean a few hundred yards, not a quarter yeah, exactly. mile. In a quarter mile, we could be super lost. Sure. You know what else is out here? A lot more than in the forest? What? Deer flies. When I think about my own enjoyment for the fighting sports, I like to kind of back myself up and say, well, yeah, that's ring tough, but this is bush tough when you get out in nature. But pro athletes, like I say, man or woman, hockey or fighting, football or mountain biking, there is another level there that they have to go emotionally, physically, and mentally. And so if you take what I do, wilderness survival, which is a stripping down to the bare bones of existence, pure survival, food, water, shelter. And then you throw in the toughness of heat and bugs or cold and wet. Is it a different level of surviving or do the pro athletes exist in that same realm? Aha! <sighs> All right. Water within sight. You can see the water. See water again, it's to our right. See how easy it is to walk away from it though? Yeah, for sure. And then one little turn to the left and, uh, and we're all of a sudden a long way from the water. I can see the water there. All right, my friend. I have no idea whether or not you're going to need this. See the stuff here? Mm-hmm. That's your toilet paper. Huh, it's better than toilet paper, actually. <laughs> uh, now that we speak, now that we're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, or you can gather now if you like, but that's your best toilet paper out here. That's called sphagnum moss. You can see how instantly just being in an open spot, even for a moment, just makes you feel that much better. I know the deer flies are out here, but just uh, getting a break for a second from that bush, man, feels good. What I want to do, actually, I want to put you here mm -hmm. and just say, you know what, dude? This is, this is it, this is your spot, which brings me to the fact that the way I'm talking right now, that's because I'm gonna leave you here. Oh, yay. You're doing this alone. You gotta do this alone. Ooh, it's two o'clock. Changes everything, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, uh, it does. Now, the choices you made on what items you brought, mm -hmm. everything, everything matters at this moment. I'm gonna leave you here alone for the night. Mm -hmm. That's the first part of this. Second part is, I'm gonna come and check on you. Probably a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back in, check on you, see how things are, and there might be some opportunities for you when I come back in. Deal. You're gonna have to hydrate. Make sure you hydrate. I don't want you dehydrating on me out here. No one wants that. You gonna handle this? <laughs> I think I'm gonna try. <laughs> this isn't, this is bush tough, all right? You're ring tough, this is bush tough. It's a whole other world, man. All right, Rogue. Let's leave the fighter to himself. <laughs> 